All right, Coach, we're going to start with Dwayne Rankin and he'll be followed by Kellen Olson. Yeah, Coach, uh, just curious, what was the um, message or at least the theme of the message at halftime? Because clearly you guys came out with a different uh, level in the second half. I mean, it was, it was probably anybody could have spoken to the team at halftime on our team. We, we just weren't playing with the force, urgency, and, and desperation that we needed to play with um, coming off of a loss and playing against a, a really good team. Um, and we talked about their points in the paint and what, you know, what they were trying to do was get to the paint to score, but really kick it out for threes. You know, they, they ended up with 36 points in the paint in the first half. You know, that's a, a record night. Uh, if you looked at the game in totality, if that trend would have continued. So we just talked about, you know, taking care of the paint, but picking up our energy and juice. I didn't think we played with, you know, continuous energy and juice and the ball just wasn't moving enough on the second half, especially in the third quarter. I mean, we scored 44 points. Uh, Devin had it going, but I thought the ball just moved around the gym a lot better. And just when you're going through a season like this, where, you know, these, these things kind of, can happen, but you know, you guys are trying to do your best to avoid it happening. Um, just what do you hope the guys take from it in totality um, in a season when this happens, but how to respond is probably the better uh, measure of, of it. Yeah, I just think you have to, you know, have that kind of um, attitude. It, it's not always going to be perfect when you're playing in a long season with this many games, not a lot of practice time. Um, you're going to have to respond to a malaise or a team that's just playing hard. And I've said it about our group all year long. We, we've been resilient um, all season. And, and that has to do with heart, attitude, grit, all those things we talk about. This team has it. And uh, we responded not only to my message, but to their own. Before I even got into the locker room, they were talking about, you know, things they needed to do. We looked at a few clips. And we came out in the third quarter and played the kind of basketball that we're capable of playing. Next is Kellen Olson and then Gina Mizell. Hey, Monty, you mentioned the ball movement. You ended up on the night with 36 assists, only three turnovers. But what did you see change in the second half specifically? Is it, is it movement off the ball? Is it is it mentality? What did you see change exactly? Well, we talk about, you know, point five is not just ball movement, it's body movement. You know, I thought that you know, it was something that was a lot. It was, you saw it some in the first half, but in the second half, uh, one, we were getting stops and playing in transition. And, and once we do that, and, and Devin has it going like that, with the spacing that we can provide him, it, we can be pretty difficult to stop. But I thought the body movement was a lot better. Once we got a stop, we were flying down the floor. And it was, it was fun for us um, because we weren't having to call plays and so the point five aspect certainly helps us, but it's not just the ball. I thought the body movement, Mikhail cutting to the basket, DA and rim run, which generates a ton of offense for us. And Chris and Book are just, you know, really good at, at finding shots for themselves or other people. Next is Gina Mizell. Hey, Monty, it probably seems redundant to ask you about why Devin's so good at scoring the basketball at this point, but just specifically in that third quarter, uh, just what did you see out of him um, to kind of really, really get going, like you said? You can kind of see when he has a rhythm, you know, his, the release is, you know, really consistent. Uh, his footwork is, you know, he and DeMar DeRozan have some of the best footwork I've seen for guards. And when he's, you know, even when he's, going full speed and he stops on the dime he goes straight up in the air I, I usually can tell when he's got it going uh, just looking at the way he's letting the ball go his balance on his shot and then I think the team realized it too and everybody was you know wanting to feed him the ball so he can he can continue it but I mean he's just got a gift I've said it before I watch him every day you know work on his shot threes mid-range all of that he's he's got a gift but he also works at it Next up is Nick King with Channel 3, Channel 5. Uh, Monty Booker's scoring. What did you think of his two passes to Mikhail that were, you know, probably close to half court, those bounce passes? They're really nice passes. I mean, I, I don't – I think when you make a pass that long down the floor, you got to put a bit of English on it for it to stop. 
or else it'll just skull right out of bounds. So, you know, he, he's more than just a score. You know, Devin defends, uh, he's a good passer. And when we're playing, like I said, those were off the stops. When we're playing in transition like that and, and Mikhail, you know, runs past the defense, I think, you know, that was Devin's way of rewarding him for, for getting out like that. All right, Book, we're going to start with Kellen Olsen and then we'll have Dwayne Rankin. Which bounce pass to Mikel did you like more, the first or the second one? Uh, probably the second one. It was, I think it was a tougher finish on, on his end. He lost his balance a little bit, still made it with his left hand, so it was tough. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you and Chris were going over something for about a minute uh, at the end of the game. How has our relationship developed for you guys over the course of the season and just those little moments inside games you use to make each other better? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we both operate – you know, in, in similar areas on the court, um, including that mid post area and post. So, you know, any advice that, you know, I can get from him being a smaller player and still being able to punish guys in that position, you know, I know with, with my size and, and my height that I could use that as an advantage if I can do a little bit of some CP3 magic. But, you know, it, it, it's bigger than that. Just one situation of us talking, you know, this is day to day, every day, texting, calling, spend the time off the court together. So a lot of learning. Next, we'll go to Dwayne Rankin and then Christo Saltis. Talk about uh, CP Magic. I saw you imitating him as you looked like you were going to come in the game, back in the game, but you didn't. You were doing Chris's little head fake. How <laughs> Chris is good guys in there. Is, is that something that you picked up from him as well? Or I mean, you were already good at it, but is that something you've seen that he do that? Yeah, so I've, been doing, I've been doing that one, Dwayne. I uh, know that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I love it though, man. You use people's aggressiveness, aggressiveness against them, um, get them with the pump fake, and it's just the it's the footwork part for me, the skill of the game, and you know, obviously he has that and more, and you know, it's really fun to watch. Okay, just a quick follow though. What what was said at the half that that I don't know maybe got you guys going, but at least put you in the frame of mind to do what you guys did in the second half. Uh, we just had to lock in. I think we were low on low on juice in the first half, and you know they weren't stopping. You know, they're gonna they're gonna keep coming at you. So you know we want to put some type of statement in the game and, and lock in. And you know we did that and ran away a little bit um, and held that lead the rest of the time. Next up is Christo Saltis from Greece, and then Gina Mizell. Hello, Devin. Congratulations on the win. How good after a tough loss against the Clippers, how good for your team is to react with that way and uh, bounce back to the winning road? And also, how impressive is the 36 assists and only three turnovers tonight? Oh, that's, that's very impressive. That's my first time hearing that stat. But, you know, sometimes you drop some games and, you know, we say it every, every time after we drop, but, you know, we don't, we don't want to lose two in a row. Um, so come in highly focused and ready to play. And, um, you know, the first half was a little bit slow for us, but we picked it up. And, you know, any win you can come up with in this in this league is important. Next up is Gina Mizell and then Takeshi Shibata. Hey, Book, uh, maybe I'm overthinking this just because I'm not a professional basketball player. But to go back to the bounce passes, like just how much timing, how much getting the trajectory of the ball the right way, just how do you execute that, not just once, but but twice in a game? Well, you have to, when you do KYP, know your personnel. And, you know, not everybody can catch that ball and, and finish it like Mikhail. Um, with, his, with his length, his ability, you know, you know, to catch that and finish that is actually tough. But I trust him with those passes. I wouldn't throw that to, to everybody. But, you know, you just have to lead it, lead them, lead them a bit, and, you know, make sure nobody gets a hand on it. You know, I usually keep it a little bit lower so, you know, the defender can't really get to it. And, put it in a place where only Mikel can get it. Final question is Takeshi Shibata from Japan. Unmute, unmute. Takeshi, you there? Okay. Hello, David. Nice to see you. Thank you for your time. This is not a game time uh, topic, but uh, I'm, I'm very curious about you. what you think about, in, you know, in this time of the year, so many fans can look back at what Kobe Bryant done, has done because it is, you know, just right before the days of 
his 60 point retirement games and uh, also the Acres tendon uh, tear and the uh, free throw. So are you one of those people who uh, who normally look back at the what he's done? Yeah, every day, honestly, you know, any, any move you make on the court, any fade away, any move like Chris did tonight with the pump fake, pump fake flyby, and then just the approach. Um, I mean, I put the saying on my shoes every night, be legendary. Um, I have it tattered on my arm, and that's something that Kobe's left me with. So there's not a day I go by, a day that goes by or a day I touch the court, you know, without thinking of them. All right, Javon, we're going to start with Dwayne Rankin, followed by Kellen Olsen. Yeah, Javon, just real quick, just what did you think of the overall bench effort? Obviously, you had 14, but Cam had 14, Cam Johnson had 12, Sarge 9, and you guys uh, gave, gave, gave maybe, you know, brought some juice to the game. What did you feel like you guys did, in that, did as a unit in that second half? Um, just played together like we normally do. Uh, shots normally fell tonight. Um, and just everybody got a piece of it. Everybody was happy playing together and just doing what we do in the second unit. Real quick uh, follow. Um, I saw Aiden run up on you after you uh, after the timeout. He was uh, excited for 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 your play. Um, what's it like having him just be that way, be him in terms of the energy factor and you know uh, you know giving guys praise, compliments, high fives, whatever you want to call it for for when guys do well. Um, that's just our whole team motto. You know, uh, we move as one. You know, uh, whether it's the first person off the bench, the last person, it don't matter. Everybody's happy for each other, and that's that's just our coach. Next up is Kellen Olson and then Gina Mizell. Hey, Javon, you guys had 36 assists tonight. You've been a part of a lot of games like this this year and last year when you guys are moving the ball like this. What's it like in the system when you know everyone's moving the right way and the ball is just finding the right spot? Um, it's fun. You know, uh, everybody being able to touch it. Everybody getting able to feel good and feel like they're out there contributing, whether it's scoring, passing, defending, rebounding, whatever it is. When we move the ball, everybody's feeling good. And shots go in when we do that. Next up is Gina Mizell. Hey, Javon, you've been back in the rotation now for a good chunk of games. And, you know, we know what you're going to bring always on the defensive end and, and your shot making and all that. But has there been anything specific during this time back in the rotation that you've been like, OK, I've, I've worked on this. I want to try to show it on the floor. Anything along those lines? Shoot the ball. OK. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I hear from from head coach to training staff. Shoot the ball. That's all I hear. Nice. Also wanted to ask you too that we move as one mantra that you just you just threw out there. Is is that like an if has has that been adopted by the whole team? Is that just something you're saying? Like I'm just curious of the, the origins of that. Um that's probably just a phrase that I'll just say, but that's that's how we move. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, don't nobody say it, but that's that's what's really going on out there. Next up is Dwayne Rankin. Just to follow that up, you, you had said earlier uh, in the season that, you know, you trust that the, not only the coaches, but just trust your work and that when your time did come uh, back that you would, that you'd be ready. Um, just maybe just the reward of that and sticking with it and, and, and being part of it and then getting back in the rotation and, and contributing. Um, yeah, just, just got to trust my work, man. That's all it is. It ain't complicated. I'd be out there thinking too much, making the game too hard. I just got to keep it simple, shoot the ball, and bring the energy. Shoot the ball, huh? That's what they've been saying? Shoot the ball. <laughs> Thanks, Javon. Yes, sir. Next up, we'll go to Takeshi Shibata from Japan. Hello, oh, Javon. Thank you for your time. So I think you you have learned a lot, a lot from Chris Paul. But what is the thing you... Uh, mostly developed during this season? Yeah! Um, just paying attention to details, like the small things in our offense, um, and just uh, being one step ahead, watching, watching, sitting over there on the sideline, watching how he, how he moves with our offense, and like seeing things I didn't see last year that he's bringing to light this year. 
So it's just uh, little stuff like that on the offensive end. Okay, and the one. I can't hear you. I can shoot one more. I still can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. I think you have played with Yuro Watanabe, a Japanese player, during your days in Memphis. So I, uh, I think he's, you know, now blooming in the Toronto Raptors. So do you, can you say, uh, can you talk about anything you remember with the, something with Yuda Watanabe, uh, playing with Yuda? What, what, does, what was good with him and uh, any, anything you remember? Um, Yuda, he, he's an all around talent. You know, um, he can do everything out there on the basketball floor. He can shoot it. He can pass it. He can defend. He can rebound. And he's tall. You know, uh, he, he got everything. All right, Mikhail, first up is going to be Kellen Olsen, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Mikhail, I asked Book the same thing, so I'll ask you, which bounce pass was your favorite for him, the first one or the second one? The second one, because it was, it was tough. I don't know how I made the layup, but the second one was dope because we already had that connection off the first one, so. I like the second one, the best one. You will be happy to hear that he said the same thing and he said it because of your finish as well. Uh, can you take me through just those finishes in transition that seem rather easy for you? Book said that he can't throw that pass to everyone because he knows how difficult it is to catch the ball, finish it. Can you take us through just when you started becoming a guy who can do those kinds of things? Um, I mean, yeah, the first one was kind of easy, just getting out of transition. I always had the ability to catch the ball. I mean... If I wasn't playing basketball, I'd be a wide out. So I'm uh that's my boys. I'm a wide out. But uh the second one just my biggest thing, it was low. So I tried to catch it and stay on balance without falling on my face. So that's why I shot it. I thought I might have traveled if I didn't shoot the ball. So you know, basketball guys was with me and then the ball went in. Next up is Dwayne Rankin and then Christo Saltis. Yeah. Well, Devon was just on, you know, talking about how, you know, the guys cheer for each other. And he said, you know, we move as, move as one. Um, when you hear that, what does that mean to you? Just to, what we, what move as one means for you as far as this team? We just, we just the team that just love each other, bro. man. I said, I'll call you bro. Uh, <laughs> it's just, just everybody. We just, we want to see everybody succeed. Obviously the biggest thing you want to win, but. Other than that, we love when everybody else scores and makes flashy passes, does every dunks the ball, do all type of things. And um, we just we I, we feel like a college team. Seriously, just around each other every day and just great vibes. It's just it's, it's it's amazing. I love it. And literally, one of the biggest cheerleaders is Aiden, like literally and figuratively. Um, you guys got to calm him down on the bench. He, he gets a little he gets a little animated. Uh, on on the sidelines. Nah, no, let him be him, man. I love it. He, especially JC, he don't hype. He's just great teammate, man. He just, we all love each other. We all close. So you can see that we all mess with each other off the court, just the, showing how we hoop. Next, we're going to Christo Saltis from Greece and then Gina Mizell. Hello, Miguel. Congratulations on the win. After a tough loss in LA against the Clippers, how good was for, for you? How good was to react with that way? And what is the most impressive part on Suns offense from your perspective? Um, I mean, the Clippers game, we just, it was a tough game. Uh, they just, I mean, they played hard enough to hold 48. They had a stretch in the fourth where they, they just took over. And that's, that's, when you play a really good team, you know, they'll do that. And we just didn't lock in for it. And what was your last part? Last part of your question. Christos. About the 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 of, the offense of Suns, how what is the most impressive part? Um just everybody can everybody can do everything, everybody can move it, shoot it, dribble pass. So we just play off each other, feed off each other, and just we play off energy and uh confidence. All right, Mikhail, final question is Gina Mizell. Hey, Mikhail, to kind of build off of Dwayne's question about the, the vibe of the team on, on the bench and off the court and all that stuff. Um, Monty was sort of asked about the, the deep bench that you guys have and 
how not everyone can play all at the same time, but just how um, professional everyone has been through that. And, and so when you, when you really do know that up and down the roster, like everyone is team first, everyone um, wants to contribute to the collective goal that you guys have, just how helpful has that been, I guess, throughout the entire season? Because it doesn't, it's not always that way on every team. Yeah, it's great. Um, even the guys that don't play in our rotation, like that's the toughest thing. It's, it's easy. It's easy to come out there and play. It's tough to just keep working every single day and grinding, grinding early, early, and not knowing you're gonna get a shot. It's it's tough. Obviously, you're gonna love the grind, but it's tough and not knowing. And um, always, always want, always tell, I always see like you know they working. It's tough for me to say something because I'm you know I play, but um, it shows it shows character, and um, I know definitely coach sees it, and. You can have a lot of guys complaining why they sh- why they should be playing, because we got talent, man. Our bench, like we got we got players that could go place that could go on the team right now and help. So, I mean, it's just credit to them, man. It's it's not easy. I know it's not easy for sure, and they just they show you know it shows how strong they are and how good character they are and just great guys.